Project Hack 9, team name, not just waste. Please see on your screen the agenda. Team introduction, Nick, David, Muller, James, Jeng, Stefan. Challenge summary. Challenge to HSE BI dashboard. The brief. Can we effectively display relevant visuals for all our health and safety and environment data that is easy to understand and tailored to employees at different roles? The output. Flexible dashboards for upper management and project leads to see their health and safety data. From a user story perspective, we focused on two areas. High level executive which would look to identify business unit sites which require improvements and from a PM perspective filter by different locations and contracts and spot trends and comparison against different projects. The first two pages are for the executives within the company who want to see a high level summary. On the top we have our key metrics. We will mainly be using the accident frequency rate which is the accident count adjusted for the total hours worked. The execs will want to know um, which locations are performing the best and worst, um, so they can combine this with their knowledge of each site to make decisions. For, we can hover, the, hover over the bars and, for example, see that this site has a high accident rate because they have one accident in only 83 hours of work. The execs will also want to see the trends over time and to dig deeper onto the causes of each injury, they can go on to the next page. This page is really to get to the bottom of why cases are happening. Users can click on the cause and see which body parts are affected and to get to the bottom of the causes, um, for example, we can see here that um, we have a lot of dust and debris entering the eyes um, from adverse weather conditions, for example. The final page is for project managers who are wanting to compare their own project performance against the rest of the company. Um, so they can select their location and they can view the comparison statistics um, with the rest of the company. And for example, we can see that um, the, our, our project, our site has more um, chemical incidents and uh, movement related injuries compared to the rest of the company. So some action there is required. The source provided from the UK Inventory webpage consisted of 40 files related to waste and site clearance. These were provided in a report format, as can be seen on this slide from the top three images. The data was siloed, which made it impossible to compare without opening each individual file and flicking between them. Therefore, we did a heavy data cleanup operation with some assistance from Python to provide all the data from all 40 reports into a single table, which provided a single source of truth. We then fed this into Power BI so the reports could easily be compared and summarised. Once we had extracted our siloed data, we were able to bring the data into Power BI. As you can see on the screen, we created a dashboard, uh, which is an executive summary of the waste and clearance data. This shows a very high level of the amount of nuclear waste that has been reported to date as well as any nuclear waste that will be deposited in the future. The two pie charts showing uh, the proportion per waste type, the bottom left bar chart showing the top 15 sites with the most nuclear waste reported and the bottom right chart showing any future nuclear waste and the levels for the next 100 years. For our second Power BI dashboard, we were able to create a project management summary. The key difference between this and the executive summary is that you're able to filter for a specific waste type. We believe that this would be uh, most useful for project managers who work on these specific sites. You're also able to see at the bottom left uh, the waste type timeline for uh, the decommissioning sites and the bottom right graph categorized into the four levels of waste. This dashboard is about the flight carbon dioxide emission. We have bar charts here showing the carbon dioxide emission in kilogram by business unit, flight type, purpose of the trip, and the project number. Over here, we have three cards showing the sum of carbon dioxide and the maximum carbon dioxide emission of a single trip. The project manager can click the slicer panel here 
to toggle the filter to display the data they would like to see. We have also included a heat map to show the CO2 emission by flight destination. This dashboard outlines the vehicle emissions data across the period of February 2018 to March 2019. This graph shows the level of CO2 generated per employee with a tooltip that highlights what tasks generated these emissions. This graph shows the total CO2 over time, whilst these tables show the top five projects and cost centres that generate the most emissions. And finally, this graph details the average trends of miles driven and CO2 generated. To sort this information, we created a slicer panel that allows you to sort by time, cost centre, project and rented versus owned, with the hope of highlighting which cost centres and projects are generating the most emissions. On this challenge, we do have data on training competence, as you can see on the graph, but it has not been used extensively because there isn't clear correlation between competency and accident rate. At the moment, the competency data we do have is the average across the entire location across multiple disciplines which can create noise. So hone on the issue, it will be useful to see the training level of the individuals who are involved in each accident. What user cases couldn't you answer and what extra data do you need? The Carbon Legends, for the vehicle carbon data there was not a full data set for 2019 to provide concrete comparisons which would have been beneficial for the flight carbon data there were no data for the flights which would have been useful in order to compare different years. For waste legends, due to the varied nature of the waste and clearance data, it would have been beneficial to spend some additional time with the nuclear expert to better understand the data. We felt if we had a breakdown of when the radionuclide data by a period we would have been able to provide further insights within our dashboards. In addition, it would have been useful to receive location-specific site data to better aid executives and PMs around logistics of waste removal. For the HSE legends, uh, for this data set, we found that when filtering for multiple variables, there had often been very accidental stroke hours worked, which gives a noisy data. Our conclusion is that the individual companies do not have the data, so we need to combine data from multiple companies for cleaner insights. If you were able to reduce emissions by 40%, how would you recommend that they should tackle? We would recommend to use sustainable lower carbon alternative fuels. In addition, electrical fuels uh, and biofuels can be used to replace jet fuels. Also, invest in new technologies to set more efficient flight paths to avoid unnecessary carbon emissions.